What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the third person and action RPG tutorial series, we're going to be going over visual effects, and specifically we're going to be going over damage effects on both the playable character and the enemy. So, if I am to attack the enemy, you can see that some little plus signs will appear above the character, or that's what they look like, they're actually just the default symbol for a particle effect, a legacy cascade particle effect in Unreal Engine. And if I take damage as the playable character, they are also going to appear at the character's location. Now, when I am moving, they stay in place. They do not follow the character, and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But you can, of course, make them whatever you'd like. I'll go over some basic changes you can do to spice them up a little bit. Really, it's as simple as that. That's what we're going to be covering today. And I'm excited to see what everyone can create with these particle effects. But before we get started in the episode, I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I really appreciate it, and I'm so grateful that you guys are excited about this series and all the different concepts and mechanics we've covered. Feel free to click this icon in the top right corner to check out the entire playlist so you can get caught up and make your game look like this. Or if you only care about the particle effects, I'll recommend that you look at this episode right here in this iCard, which is where we went over creating an enemy that could take damage which will be useful because we will be building on that logic today. But with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and make the particle effects and then we'll go over adding them and assigning them. And in which case we can actually spawn them and see what they look like in the game. So first things first, I made a new effects folder. So I have effects here. And in this folder, I have made two Cascade Particle Systems, and they are considered legacy because I am in Unreal Engine 5. If you are in Unreal Engine 4, you will see the Cascade Particle System won't be legacy. But whether you're in 4 or 5, this will work the same. You do have another alternative option to the Cascade Particle System, which is the Niagara Particle System. I will have a separate episode on that because it is important to know both methods depending on what it is you want to implement. The Cascade is the easier of the two in my opinion, so I've started with that one, but both can be relevant at different times. So first thing we're going to want to do is create a visual effect. We can just do one or we could do different ones. I'm going to do one for the character and one for the enemy, but you likely will have a lot for the enemy, a lot for the character, or different enemy types, or different damage types, so feel free to go crazy if you have a lot in mind already. Now, you can add this by going to Add, Miscellaneous, Cascade Particle System, Legacy. Now, once you select this, you'll get a Cascade Particle System, and you can call it whatever you want. When you come in here, you will have a default effect, and this is what you saw spawning on the screen. So you can see I haven't done anything with that. That is the default particle emitter. You can do a lot of things to change these, and I'll cover a few of those and test them right now. So let's close this tab, and I'm going to delete the new one that I made and go to the other ones that I have already set up in the series. So once you open up your character damage VFX here, you will have a bunch of stuff on the screen that I'm not going to cover because you can do a ton of things to actually create your own effects in here. That's not what this episode is about. We will have an episode on creating more specialized effects. That's something I'd love to cover. But for now, we're just going to get the functionality in and working. You can make these effects look like whatever you want, however you want, and fully customize them. Now, when you come in here, you're going to have a details panel, and it will have quite a few options for you. And this panel is going to change based on what you click on over here. The one we want to go to is the required section. If we open this up, you can change the material, but beware, if you don't have a material that will work for this, and you try and add it, then you'll most likely see nothing in here. So I'm leaving the default particle because I don't have anything. I'm scrolling down a little bit until I get to the one field that I changed, which was emitter loops. Emitter loops was initially zero, and it will be for you when you create one. This just means it will loop forever. The comment tells you this as well. So it says the number of times to loop the emitter, zero indicates loop continuously. So if we come to the game and now the character takes damage, they're going to have this effect playing forever. Now, since the emitter is not attached to my character right now, it looks pretty silly, but you can see that it is a permanent effect. And so in this case, I don't want that. I only want it to run once, so I'm gonna change emitter loops back to one. 
and then it will run one time and then complete. Now, feel free to have a field day with all this. You can change everything you want. One thing that I think is fun is the initial size. You can actually go to initial size and change the start size distribution and change the min and the max. So I could make it four times as large on the X axis, for example. And you'll see it does change in here. It looks much bigger, but then also that will reflect in the game. So now I will have this huge particle effect So you see how changing things in here can very easily get you a new effect that could look really good in your game or silly or whatever the effect is that you're going for. But at this point, the character damage VFX is done. You can customize it to your liking. I've actually made the exact same one for the enemy damage VFX. So there's nothing special that you have to do in here, but I made another Cascade Particle System Legacy called Enemy Damage FX. And in here, I have also changed the emitter loops to be one instead of zero. That way it doesn't play forever. Let's go ahead and change something. That way they are different. Let's go ahead and change the initial velocity. Now for the velocity, these are the actual directions that they will move. So if I change it on the Y axis, it will actually move on that Y axis. And the same with the X and the Z. So for example, you can see that the max is 100. So some of these will fly to be farther than the others based on their velocity in the same time frame. If I make this 1000, you're gonna see that they're gonna really fly up there. So that might be a little excessive, but we could make it 250 as an example, and you'll see it is a pretty big change. So the enemy has a much more drastic and quicker effect for taking damage than the playable character. Anyway, once you have your character damage VFX and your enemy damage VFX, we are good to go. We're going to go into the code, and we want to go to the third person tutorial character .h. When this character takes damage, we want to play a proper effect. And to do this, we're going to make a particle effect that we keep track of and assign. That way we know what effect to display. Now, in this basic example, I'm going to have one effect for all types of damage. So I'm going to scroll down to my variables and I'm going to make a new variable that is of type U particle system and I've made it a pointer so we can just point to it and access that effect. So I've made this variable U property of edit anywhere blueprint read write with a category of VFX so we can actually access it and change it in the blueprint. Again that is U particle system pointer that's what the asterisk is for and I've called it the damage effect. Now, in the constructor, so going to the third person tutorial character.cpp constructor, we can set our default value for the damage effect. And I just set it to no pointer, which means it's just empty. If we don't assign it, there is no actual effect. So, worst case scenario, just nothing plays. No particle effect plays, and that's okay. We're going to want to do the same thing for the enemy character while we're here. So, here is my default enemy.h. Let's go in there as well and scroll down and I'm going to basically make the exact same thing that we made in the character. So I have my U property edit anywhere blueprint read write category of enemy. You can call this VFX as well if you want. You don't have to have the quotes. You see it works whether you have the quotes or not. I like the quotes because it formats it more like a string here. So in Visual Studio I can see that it's this orange color, but that really does not matter at all. U particle system pointer damage effect. So you could literally copy and paste this from the character, but the enemy is very likely to have a different damage effect than the playable character. So it is important that they each have their own variable. Going to the default enemy.cpp and going to the constructor, you can see that we set the damage effect in here to be null pointer. All right, with that out of the way, we have to actually set this particle effect, this damage effect variable. And we could do it in the code if we had reference to our particle effect. So if we had created the particle effect in the code, we would be able to do that. But we actually just made them in the effects folder here. So instead, how we need to assign them is go into our character, our playable character, blueprint. So we have our base character BP, which is where we set up the mesh and the attachments for the character. 
and the logic in here is not important, but the viewport, you can see that this is my character that I'm controlling. And thus, this is the character blueprint that I want. Now, if I click on class defaults, I will open up a details panel and I want to search for either the category or the specific variable name. So I can search for VFX or I can search for damage effect. Either way, I'm going to get this as my result. It will be empty. You can then click the one that you want. I have P torch fire, which is one that has just come with one of the packs that I had installed. But I also have my two new ones that I made. So I'm going to pick my character damage VFX for here. Now the damage effect has been properly assigned, so we will be able to play that. We're going to make sure that we do the same thing for our enemy. So I'm going to go to my enemy, base enemy BP. Go to my class defaults in here. Here's my enemy. Then I'm going to search for damage effect. And you'll see in here, I've chosen my enemy damage VFX. So now both of my character blueprints have the appropriate damage effect assigned. When we play them, it will play that effect that we have assigned. So we're going to go back to the code. We're going to do the third person tutorial character one first. And we can scroll down to where our take damage function is. And it is right here. Now in this function, we can call our particle effect whenever it is that we want to create it. So you have a lot of different options here. In my specific case, I have shields and actual health. And if the character doesn't have shields, then the damage that they get goes directly to their health. So we may sometimes want to play a shield effect, or we may want to play a health effect. In this case, we only have the one. So I'm doing it at the very bottom of the take damage function inside the first if statement, if we are not currently dead, but you may want to put one particle effect if they have armor and one if they don't. That way, different effects play depending on the state of the character. Now, to actually play an effect, we need to add an include because we need to call this function on uGameplayStatics. So let's scroll up to the top of the file and add this right here. Include Kismet Gameplay Statics. And this is just a class that exists within Unreal that can do certain things that we don't always need, but sometimes we may need to. In this case, we do need to because it has the function that we're calling in take damage now, which is the spawn emitter at location. So once you've added that include to your file, make sure you call you gameplay statics colon colon spawn emitter at location. Now this function has a few parameters. The first one is the context that we want to spawn the emitter at, and that is going to be our current world. So we can simply call get world here. The second is the effect that we are trying to spawn or the emitter that we're trying to spawn at this location, and that is going to be our damage effect. The third is the actual transform. So the location, rotation and scale where you want to spawn this emitter. I'm just doing it at the center of our actors. I'm getting my actor transform. You can be more specific. You can spawn it higher up if it's on the head. You could spawn at a hit location if you're hit by a projectile. You can do things like that to make it look nicer. Right now, this is just a very generic effect that just displays at the center of our character. Now, this is spawning the emitter at this location. This is not spawning the emitter attached, which is another function, another option that you have. To spawn the emitter attached, you will be able to pass in a component and a socket. And so I could spawn it directly on my character's shoulder or on my head and as the character walked around that effect would follow that is probably what we will want for more specific types such as like a poison or a bleed effect for the actual damage effect it is okay to spawn at the location although with a lot of movement you can see it still looks kind of funny we're going to go over spawning attached in the next episode on vfx it's very similar but there are a few things we'll need to do to get it to work right so for now i'm keeping the spawn emitter at location the other parameters that this function have are optional, so you can ignore them for now. Now we're going to want to go to our default enemy.cpp, and we want to include the same include that we did in our third person tutorial character because we need to call that same function. 
So we need to include kismet slash gameplay statics dot h. And this will allow us to go into our take damage function and call that spawn emitter at location. Now it is not exactly the same where this function didn't already have an if not dead. So we could technically keep damaging the dead enemy. I think it is better to only do all of this logic if the enemy is not dead. It is not required that you do this, but again, I think it is better because otherwise the enemy will be allowed to continuously die even after they're dead, which allows you to do things like get additional requirements done for a quest. <laughs> if you attack or damage a dead enemy, you will be awarded for defeating them again. They will also play their death animation over again if they're able to do so and things like that. So this little if check here is good to just make sure they can only die the one time and they only play the VFX while they're dead, but again, not required. In this if not is dead if statement, I've added this line, you gameplay statics, colon, colon, spawn emitter at location, and you'll notice it is exactly the same. We are using the world for the context, we're using the damage effect on this character, and then for the transform, we're still using the transform of this actor. Now at this point, when either the character or the enemy takes damage, they will display an effect. So just one more time, effect, and when I take damage, effect. And there you go. This is how we can do the most basic of visual effects in our game. We will have a lot more to do with this in the future, but now that you're familiar with setting up a basic effect and spawning it at a location, you have a lot of flexibility for what you truly want to do with that. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped you make visual effects in your game. And if it did, please subscribe or consider supporting me on Patreon and YouTube membership for exclusive benefits. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community listed in the description. It is completely free, and I'd be happy to help you get sorted. That way you could continue on with the series with no issues. Like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.